Welcome to Bridge Atlantic's interviews, where we get to know the people behind and in front of the creative industries. I'm Ross Barber Smith, owner of Electric Kiwi, where we create awesome custom websites for bands, artists, and musicians. You can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook as Electric Kiwi. This is true, and I'm singer songwriter and multi instrumentalist Marcin Novelli from Canada. I mean, I wear many hats, literally and figuratively. I make music, I produce records, I mix records, I direct and uh, edit music videos and music documentaries, but most importantly, I make music. I'm a singer, songwriter, multi-instrumentalist people. I live and breathe music, what I do. Um, speaking of which, I've actually got a new acoustic EP coming out. It's called The Reimagining, and basically I reimagine previously released material of mine. Um, but you know, I, I basically, I write all my songs with an acoustic guitar usually. And then I bring them to the studio. I co-produce, and I bring in a producer to co-produce it with me. I, li- I, I bring them to life. I lift them up. And in this situation, I brought them right back down to the acoustic guitar, but I lifted them just slightly, just slightly embellished with uh, some piano and uh, some strings. So it's, it's really pretty. Um, I'm excited for everyone to hear it. So definitely go check that out. Just go to my website, marcinavelli.com. And uh, if you want to follow me on the internet's social medias, uh, I'm on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook as my name, Marcio Novelli. That is also true. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and as someone who has heard the reimagining, uh, I can say it is definitely very awesome. So oh, thank uh, you. you should definitely go and check that out definitely um and you know while you're online checking stuff out uh why not go on to our store where you can pick up one of our shirts available in seven different colors uh there's a link to that in our show notes so go and get them. and if you're listening to this i hope that you think we rock so we've created uh it's kind of like a i don't know like narcissist and i wouldn't say narcissistic kind of egotistical maybe very confident coupon code called bta rocks and I you'll get tongue in cheek Tongue in cheek. Okay, yeah, that's really what it is. You get 10% off um, just as our way of saying thank you for your support. Um, basically, we do this show pretty much for free, um, other than our Patreon supporters who are awesome. Um, and another way to support us is basically to get our shirts. It helps us to keep doing this and to interview um, all the amazing people that we've interviewed. I think this is, um, we're going on to over 120 interviews now. I'm not mistaken. And uh, that's a lot. That's a lot of people to talk to. And we love every, that sounded bad. It sounded like, oh my God, there's so many people to talk to. No, it has been so many amazing people to talk to. Um, and we want to bring you another 120. We want to bring you another thousand. You know, we want to keep doing this. Um, but basically we need your support. And um, the best way to do that is to either pick up a shirt or two, or to go to patreon.com slash bridge the Atlantic and become a patron. For as little as a dollar, you can just do a dollar an episode. You can do a dollar a month. Really, it doesn't matter. Every single little bit counts. So help us out. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. So joining us this week is vocal instructor Melissa Cross out of New York City. Melissa is a highly in-demand voice teacher and creator of the acclaimed Zen of Screaming instructional DVD. Her approach to singing is rooted in passion and authenticity, and the techniques she teaches are all about art allowing artists to be themselves it's true <laughs> everything is true apparently that you say ross she's worked it's with some of the, it's all true she's worked with some of the biggest bands and artists in the business and some of my favorite uh, vocalists actually her client list includes vocalists of bands just as sleeping with sirens hill storm senses fill taking back sunday circus survive and even kevin bacon anyways we're excited to get to know melissa and hear what advice she'd offer to musicians like all of you so welcome to the show melissa hi Hey. I guess I, I, I'll speak now. You can speak. I've, I've been adoring you all this time, and now it's time for you to adore we, me. We no. warned you, right? You said, don't <laughs> speak during the intro. Don't speak. I, I, I know that you want to, but anyways, let's just, laughing. let's just dive right in, Melissa. I want you to tell us three things about yourself that everyone should know. Okay, let's see. You know, that was something that I should have prepared, but I didn't. But I could tell you some things <laughs> definitely that you should know. One thing is that I always tell the truth. You can depend on me to tell the truth. I will not blow smoke up your ass about anything. I won't be uh, mean or insensitive, but I won't, I won't blow. I mean, I won't tell you something that isn't true for my own benefit or for anything. Secondly, I'm a little bit of a pushover. You could probably get me to do just about anything. (laughs) I'm a you, big you people pleaser. Down here and do some well, wait, 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 no, wait, wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, wait. I, I, I need to like uh, specify a little bit. That's way too broad for me to say that because I didn't mean anything. Oh, <laughs> it's just that I'm usually a person that's pretty willing to like make people feel better. That's sort of I'm here on this earth to help. 
people. That makes me feel good. So I, um, maybe it's like kind of secretly narcissistic to be that way. Because uh, maybe I have this mass need to be loved. I was by just going to say that. I can relate to that. I understand. <laughs> you busted me. I understand. <laughs> but you know what? It can be a balance. You know, it, it does. It is good to help other people. I mean, it Ross is. and I talk about this often. Actually, we don't talk about it on the show often. We talk about it off the show often, but it is important to give back and just within reason. I mean, maybe you can talk, touch on this a little bit, Ross, but like, you know, you have some clients that you've helped out, you know, when needed. You know, I, I shouldn't say, I talk about that too much that's your your place to talk about it but i think that you know there's a balance between knowing when you're taken advantage of and when yeah. you're simply doing a good thing for somebody and yeah. sometimes yeah. you've got to be able to gauge the difference and in fact I'm you've always got to be able to gauge the difference i'm good at like saying okay enough is enough yeah but i i usually don't say no initially unless it's completely egregious crap you know sure. then but um that's you know i think those are the important you know, the important things. Um, we do need one more. We need oh, one more. Oh, that's right. You need the two, huh? Okay. Okay. Keep, so Ross is on the ball. I know yeah. she thought she was getting away with this right. easy, but you know. yeah, he, he's good with the numbers for us. I noticed this. Okay. <laughs> so, all right. Number three, I'm just going to drag something out of the air. The thing that I look for in a partner of that. Oh. Um, I am a sucker for talent. Okay, like if a person is talented, it's likely that they could get away with murder. I'm getting better at this. Wow. Right? But I used to be like pick like really, really bad people, right? Because they were talented. Now I'm getting a little mm. bit better that they need to be good in their soul. And they need to have a, um, they've got to have a great mind and they've got to have some talent because I want them to know what it's like to have talent. I want to, I, I, I get off on that. Talent is um, so attractive. It, it, it is very sexy. Along with a great personality, I think. Very sexy. It's so important That's, for me. Exactly. Yeah. So I think that those are the things that I'm, uh, I look for in a partner. Well, I will keep that in mind, Melissa. Please. I'll let my, I'm not, I'll let I'm my wife know. Match. but I'm not, I'm not on Match.com. <laughs> I love it. I think we should dive in. I want to know more about you, Melissa. Let's let's uh, let's talk a little more about your uh, where Here you. Here we go. Uh, yeah, <laughs> let's talk a little bit about like uh, where you came from. As I was doing my research on you, sadly, I I didn't find you on Match.com, but I did find your website, <laughs> MelissaCross.com, and in your bio, you mentioned that you discovered. The classical training you received didn't have much context in the rock singing that you were doing. Mm -hmm. um, how did you develop the technique that you now teach? And what are the main differences between that and the techniques that weren't really working for you? Oh, that's a huge question. That's sort of like my entire life right here. Okay. okay. So this is, <laughs> it's that's a good all. question. Okay. In 10 seconds or less. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. So I'm going to go as fast as I can because this is a big, deep story. But what happened was I got injured because of the fact that I was taking classical lessons, but I was in a punk band and we were at CBGB's. I mean, this is early, the, the first time around, like I'm old, okay? So I was in a punk band in the late seventies, okay? Like the first time it hit, right? Like when oh, yeah. it all st kind of started. Okay, so I'm taking classical lessons, but I'm, I'm very much enamored with, like since I was 13 years old, Janis Joplin was my idol, right? So. I always liked that sound of distortion, but I could only figure out how to do it by drinking, smoking, eating mayonnaise and crackers and um, uh, lots of whiskey, you know, right, and it right. wasn't dependable and I hurt myself doing it. So that injury caused me to go into vocal rest, right, for about six months and I hit the books and I started to learn about the voice and I took speech therapy uh, and it was in speech my speech um, behavior modification that I realized that there's an aspect of classical resonance that is part of good resonant speech. And I was like, the, the lights went off. I was like, that's it. That's the bridge between non-classical and classical music. We need to take the resonance strategy from classical music and put it into the speaking, the spoken tone, which is more, uh, closer, like the it's called modal register, and it's closer to what non-classical music is all about. 
So that's what my technique is all about. And, and, and before I got into the hardcore scene, right, that's what my training, I was a singing teacher for at least 13 years before a producer came to me and said, I cannot get these kids through a recording session without losing their voices. And I was like, okay, I'll try to help. And it was a different kind of metal than I was really familiar with. Because I'd already gone, you know, at, at this time, this is like the late 80s, early 90s, right? And this this speed metal stuff was because, it's like a lot of squatter kids and, uh, you know, Lower East Side, like teenagers, they were um, listening to this really fast music. This was like 1984, 83. And uh, I was like, what, the, what is that? And then I saw a show with um, Slayer and Megadeth and the Bad Brains. I was like, oh my God. I mean, I was on the balcony looking down at these kids, like, moshing. And I was like, they all know what to do. And they all know the words. And they, they all look like they have these clothes. And they're all, you know, inked up. And they've got, you know, nose rings. It's like, I, I, I'm too old, damn it. I can't do this. And I, I really wanted to be a part of it because it reminded me of the solidarity that I got into in the 60s when I got into music to begin with. That was during the Vietnam War. That was when... Um, you know, music was an identity. It wasn't just a, a um, artistic medium. It was a life choice, and it meant more than just singing and playing music. So I longed for that because there were so many bells and whistles and crap that goes into the music business and the production aspect that I really missed the authenticity. And what I was looking at when I was looking down at that audience was pure authenticity and pure authenticity coming off the stage and now this producer is bringing in these kids that are doing that so I said you know what I'm not going to say no to this I'm going to try to help so I used my scientific knowledge and my desire to be of service to figure out a way to make a shout without hurting yourself right so I figured it out by my imitative capacity and also I'm very trained I mean not only vocally but I went to acting college in the United Kingdom, like one of the best. Um, I went to the Bristol Old Vic Theatre School. It's really hard to get into. They only take like, you know, 25 people out of about 4,000, you know. So it's like, that's all. It's a big deal. Yeah, that's, that's it. Ridiculous. It was a good, it's a very good, very good, very only, good Only 4,000 people. Yeah. <laughs> only a <laughs> It was very good. That. Really, really. I mean, I learned my chops come from Shakespeare yeah. and from opera and all that stuff. So I got really good chops. So I had like the capacity to like figure this out. So, and I had an imitative kind of um, talent. So I made the sound in an imitative way within the parameters of safety. Put a, went to the doctor's office and put a camera down my throat to realize what's actually happening. And throughout the years, I've continued this research. Um, and all of a sudden, well, we'll pick up the story from there. But that's a long answer, but that's how it goes. Did that's I answer beautiful. the question? Yeah, that's great. <laughs> that's actually the first reason I ever even saw a vocal coach. Who, uh, her name's Jen, who's a, a close friend of mine now. That's the reason I actually ever went to vocal coach, because... Uh, being a singer, but also as a teenager, I was in a band that I like to sing and then scream, you know, the whole post-hardcore thing. Yeah. And after a show, I'd have no voice for two weeks. I was destroying yeah. my voice. So, you know, I, yep. be, I went to her and she taught me, you know, obviously some classical techniques, but also realized that that's, you've got to imply, or what's the word I'm looking for? You've got to actually infuse that with some, a little bit different techniques and different things for different people. You know, she yes. knew that I was going for more of a pop rock thing and, and wanted a bit more, you know, of something else. You know, I'm not really, I'm not really explaining this that well, but no, I, I know can what relate you to that. And then, I know you know, you I remember, I remember just as a side note, I, Ross, I think you, you used the Zen of Screaming at one point, didn't you? Yes, I yes. used to do, <clears throat> Melissa, I used to do your singing exercises every morning in the shower. Oh yeah. Wow. Uh, which, wow. Were, which annoyed my flatmates uh, <laughs> to no, the, to no end. You mean just, you're listening to the CD going, these are Z's. <laughs> exactly. Starting with the, okay. <laughs> I love yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And, and I used yours yeah. as well uh, to help me learn to. I basically I, I used it and I took that technique and kind of put it in my arsenal for when I needed to add some heat or what, I forget what you call it, e but when you add e heat, yeah, That's when you add it, when yeah. you want to add, e add some heat to just yeah. a, a specific, maybe a high note or something. I want to add a bit more ruggedness to it. So you definitely yeah. have have 
your technique is in my arsenal. Cool. <laughs> it's in my back pocket when I need to use it. <laughs> and there's more. And I have more because I'm working on a on a website that's like a kind of much more updated version um, with the different kinds of screams. And that's it's sort amazing. of like a, a, a subscription website where oh. not only you could get my technique, but anybody that I think is decent, I will also include them because I'm not exciting. the only one. Yeah, it's going to be great. And I'm actually using animation because really this is a, a singing is a very, is a visual thing. Yeah. It's the way to do it is to actually not think of singing at all, but the, the far away from singing, the more distant you can become from technically singing, the better it is. Yeah. And uh, so the animation is kind of like creating like the suggestions of placement and it's very cool. Metaphors and, and symbolism yeah. work one, wonders for me. I can't, if yeah. I think about technically, that is it. The second I think about it as like an abstract concept, I'm like, oh, there it is. You know why? Do you know why? <laughs> Tell me, Because please. you'll stop, you, when you go to that part of the brain, you stop breathing. You go, uh, mm -hmm. everything stops for your mighty thought, right? You go, and then if you don't have the airflow, you don't have the sound. Right. So that's why you have to stay in that kind of like, you know, right brain, like childlike creative yeah. sort of uh, visual thing. And metaphors need to make sense though. You can't yeah. just like do this anecdotal, like this metaphor works for me, so it's going to work for you. Right. You have to like gauge the client as to like, where are they in terms of their visual aspect? Because some, you know, I have Asperger's clients that mm -hmm. they can't get that at all. Right. So I have to like work something else, you know, but animation always gets them. <laughs> well, you already spoke about authenticity and how important that is um, and being genuine. Um, how, how would you say that you encourage artists to sing like themselves? Um, which is a concept a lot of people maybe don't really get uh, rather than imitating other artists because there's a, no one likes a copy of a copy. You know what I mean? Exactly. And are there specific exercises or mindsets that can help artists find their authentic voice? Absolutely. The whole basis of my technique is to stop listening to yourself. Now, yes, you, you need to be, you need to be your voice not be like another voice. So it's, I tried the exercises that I give. They're not supposed to sound good. They're kind of silly, but they create a physical sensation that you're supposed to channel very subtly when you actually perform. You don't like perseverate on like, I, I need to feel this buzz in my head. It's not, it's like you pretend that the buzz is happening. You don't like wait for the buzz to come. So like, for instance, I have ideas like above the pencil, which is a phenomena that happens when you go, you, because the amount of space in the throat creates this kind of resonance that resonates against the bones in your face. It feels like the sound is actually emanating from above a pencil in your teeth. Right. So you could, on certain vowels, you can really feel the buzz. But when you're performing, you don't wait for a buzz. <laughs> well, maybe if you want to get high afterwards, but, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you don't wait for that physical sensation. You pretend that you are feeling that sensation. And that makes the body behave in a certain way that creates really good sound, i.e., a lowered larynx, more room in the throat, more overtones. Um, you won't push because th there's a whole like great consequence of imagining above the pencil. So the, the idea of imagination as opposed to judgment and listening is at the basis of my technique. That's the biggest hurdle to get over, I think, is listening it to is. yourself and realizing yeah. and being confident in your own voice. Exactly. Yeah. So you can't get rid of it, but you can replace it. Well, this it interview has turned so. into a wonderful vocal lesson for me. Um, <laughs> I hope you all have enjoyed tuning in. <laughs> all right, Melissa. Everybody I could, pay me. I could, I could talk to you forever. <laughs> this is how we get away with the free vocal lesson. We just have her on an interview, right? <laughs> Are you ready for 20 questions, Melissa? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Let's do this. Coffee or tea? Coffee. Meat or veggies? Meat. Twitter or Facebook? Twitter. Talent or attitude? Yes. Mm, I knew that would be a tough one for her. Texas or New York? Tough one? New York. Instagram or Snapchat? Instagram. Yoga or yogurt? Yogurt. <laughs> Technique or emotion? 
Yes. <laughs> Education <laughs> or experience? Yes. <laughs> Okay, the answer to this one may be yes, too. Ghosts or aliens? No. No? no? <laughs> Do you believe in ghosts or aliens? Nope. Mm, interesting. Canada or Scotland? Scotland! Of course. Scotland! You've got family from Scotland. You spent time in the UK. I get it. Aye. I get it. I'm Jew. I won't take that one personally. <laughs> no, don't take it personally, Marcia. You're not Canada. We've said this multiple times. I know you are not Canada. Canada. No. This is true. I'm not Canada. Scots and Scots. Yeah. See my radio. Conan here. O'Brien. Conan. Oh, Conan O'Brien or Conan the Barbarian. Oh, oh, Conan O'Brien. Yeah. Definitely. I was on the show. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I love him. <clears throat> You're on all those late night shows. And yeah. they loved you. They absolutely love loved him. you. Especially Conan, I think I remember him being that was very. The best. I remember him being very, uh, very wowed by you. <laughs> that was I was just playing the straight guy. I swear, yeah. I was just playing the straight guy. I let him do his thing. Yeah, uh, it was it was awesome. I loved him. Good guy, right? Yeah. Cool, cool. Yeah. Vampires or zombies? Empires. Mm. Batman or Superman? <sighs> oh. Uh, Batman, I guess. This one, Batman. this one is very important. Okay, twerk okay. or work? <laughs> no, no, yes. I mean, okay, <laughs> if I have to, yes. <laughs> Another equally, if not more important, oh question: God. Yes, Michael Jackson or Michael Bolton? Uh, Michael Jackson. I thought she might have been a Bolt. I just um, might have been a Bolt fan. I was hoping. I was hoping. Yeah. You wanted Bolton? Ross always wants Bolton. I love Bolton. Uh, I know he's <laughs> got a great Bolt. voice, but the thing is, is that Michael Jackson was also a dancer. Yeah, phenomenal um, dancer. And a performer and... Uh, Songwriter and uh, everything. Th- well, he I was think... kind of like a freak of nature a little bit. Oh, yeah. So, I, I, and, you know, I like both of them. And they both are different. They have different things to offer. But in terms of like the amount of you know, experience and output and pure talent. I don't know if he's, I don't know if he was a great person though. I imagine Michael Bolton is a really good person. Celine Dion or Marilyn Manson? (sighs) We ask the tough questions here, Melissa. We do. I'm going to say, I'm going to say Celine. Why? But... I'm surprised no, you've never I, worked I with really, Marilyn Manson, by the way. Well, he never asked me. I don't well, think he needs it. Come on, man. He, did, he, didn't, he didn't want to. He didn't come need on, it. <laughs> come on, Brian. Come on, Brian Warner. Come on, man. What are you waiting for? It, it, you can always up your shots. <laughs> no, people don't need it. If they Mostly when you're on that level, you get sent to me because you're hurt. Like you're ah, wounded. Right, right, right? right. So he's never gotten wounded. So I guess he's, you know. I mean, it's not like people are saying, God, your pitch is awful. Right, you know, <laughs> he doesn't give a shit. <laughs> Who am I to tell so him? Why, right? why Celine Dion? Um, because she's a Canadian treasure. Because her voice is stunning. It is, isn't I it? I mean, she's just she's just, and she is a museum piece. You yeah. know, in terms of like a technical voice, it's Absolutely. just stunning. She is actually a color tour soprano. And that is what a great opera singer would sound like if they could get over the technique, get into like non-classical technique. Okay. So her capability is God-given. It's not, Mm. also she worked very hard, but she has like an instrument that is like a stunning instrument. Yeah. Whale or kale? Whale. Bette Midler or the Riddler? <laughs> I'm going to say the Riddler because people used to say I they reminded me of Bette Midler and I used to get upset. Oh, why? Um, so, well, Bette because Midler is an I, American treasure. <laughs> I know, but but I, 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 you know, I love her. I think she's funny, but sometimes she was over the top. Oh, of course. And I, and I kind felt like I, I was kind of like, I'm not over the top. I try not to be over the top. Mm. I mean, I do love her. She's wonderful. I love her. I love her. I love her. Uh, well, you got to pick someone. So you went with the Riddler. I mean, it's fair. Speaking of asking the tough questions here. Yeah. Okay. And and, and having to pick one or the other. Yeah. I know. So I'm going to say that yes and no is not an acceptable answer Uh-oh. for this question. <laughs> Uh-oh. 
Okay. Now you've watched the show, so I think you may know what's coming. She may have not gotten this far, though. <laughs> yeah, you might not have gotten this far. Yeah, true. Ross oh, or Marcio? No! No! <laughs> you mustn't make me do that. But we must. We're already no. there. We're already there. It's already happened. Okay, so, but let, let's put this in context. Mm -hmm. Like, Ross for what? Marcio for what? I mean, mm. what are we, what, what's the context? Well, you, are you tell us, to Melissa. Live with me? Are you sleeping with me? Are you cooking for me? Are you, like, what, what are you going to do? You tell me, Melissa. <laughs> <laughs> I take both of you, I swear, and that's not an acceptable answer. <gasps> oh, I, this is terrible. You're terrible. No, I'm going to maybe, I, I don't want to lose, so I'm going to take that. <laughs> I'm going to take the safe route. <laughs> okay. You picked both okay. of us. We're going to leave it at that, Melissa. Okay, okay, because I really do love both of you. I really do. I yeah, do. We, lo we love you too. Okay. Even before we got okay. a chance to speak to you, we did love you. It's very cool. True. Cool. Because um, you're both like really special. Yeah, I mean, I showered with you every morning. <laughs> you know, so. <laughs> I know what you look like. <laughs> well, listen, and you've seen up inside here. my mouth, too. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we have, actually. Before we wrap up, uh, you're naughty. I like it, by the way. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> I like you that much more for it. Uh, before we wrap up, is there any just very quick tips um, you can give to every artist at every level in any genre and, and simply to take care of their voice? What are the simplest and uh, things that they can do? Um, and maybe whether they're heading into the studio or even going on the road, maybe that's something to consider. Okay. So if, if I guess it's going be to, over okay. Years, oh, right? that's what you want. Like what, what to do for the next big thing. Yeah. Right? That would be a good, uh, you need to know the material. Okay, you need to know the notes of what, or if, if they're actual sung notes, you need to know them. Not just know it like to like you're singing with somebody on the radio. You need to know the notes because if you don't know the stuff really well, chances are the sloppiness is going to make you overwork. Because um, when you search for stuff, um, and I have a way of like clarifying a body memory of where the notes are, uh, you need to warm up. You need to warm up. It doesn't take very long. I've actually got a new way to do it in five minutes. Um, wow. And uh, don't go cold. Do not talk over loud music. Like, don't talk in between when the music's on on stage. And when you do meet and greets, like, if the noise level is really hot, like, be careful that you don't. Because you do this all day at concerts and you don't know that you're doing this. And all yep. of a sudden, you know, you Top realize me. that it, it wasn't the show that, like, trashed you. It was like what happened after and before the show, um, especially when you're drinking afterwards and you kind of lose. You need to like either put your hand on your uh, your finger on your ear or put like a clean cigarette butt in your ear <laughs> if you haven't got any cotton wool, right? Put it in your ear so you can monitor the level of your speech because you could do a lot of damage like just by talking incorrectly. Um, I would say respect your voice. You're not. It's not invincible, but don't be a pussy. Don't be you know, precious and don't, oh God, please don't say, uh, 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 you know, don't treat it like it's like that you're special because it's, it's not, <laughs> everybody's got one, just like an asshole, right? So it's not, it's not precious, but you have to take care of it. It's not invincible. So don't slam it. Get a good teacher, get a good teacher. And uh, the most important thing is to love it. Yep. Because if you're doing it for money, <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. That's, a that's joke. the funniest thing we said on the show. <laughs> that Ever. is, that is the funniest thing. It's not. I mean, if you could do something else, <laughs> if you could possibly do anything else, do it. Like this is only for people that will not survive spiritually and yep. emotionally if they don't do it. I could not agree with you anymore, Melissa. Where can people okay. find more of your amazing teachings online, on social media? What's the best place to find you? www.melissacross.com. However, I am a Twitter person. That's what I thought. And my, my, my handle is at Melissa Cross. And uh, you can find us, as in the show, on Twitter, Facebook, iTunes, and YouTube. Uh, just search for Bridge the Atlantic. You'll find us there. And uh, yeah, this time I didn't say YouTunes or... Uh, yeah. I, iTube, I, iTube or anything. Or I didn't create a new social network this time. I, <laughs> I managed to say them all correctly. So go me. <laughs> As for me, I'm working on my second solo album. You can be part of it at marcinavelli.com slash pledge. However, 
Um, I think it's coming out uh, the week that this interview is coming out or something or near it. Uh, not the album, but my acoustic EP, The Reimagining. I want you to go check it out. I'm, I'm very happy for you to hear it. And Ross has officially endorsed it, apparently. Ross is, is my endorsement for it. Uh, make yeah, sure to follow me on... Thanks for the check. Yeah. <laughs> make sure to follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and Spotify. It's all my name, Marissa Novelli. Um, say hi. I love chatting with everybody. Um, I try my best to answer to everybody who messages me so um yeah just say hi i'm available i'm here i'm not i'm not, not available, available. <laughs> i've got a wife and kids but i'm available to chat <laughs> and uh me i'm working on websites for various artists at the moment uh you can check out my work at electrickiwi.co.uk you'll find me on twitter and instagram as electric kiwi and on facebook electric kiwi design uh come and chat with me on twitter that's probably the best place um if you want to get really adventurous yeah. you'd message both of us at the same time it's kind of like a twitter menage a trois it'll be kind of hot it be really it'll be cool we'll be hot for ross mostly i don't know about that if wow ross, ross has turned it down i, I was i was that. trying to get us in a in a twitter three-way here guys i wonder who, i, I wonder were. who's gonna be the first to do a Twitter three-way with us. Get us both in a convo and it'll be Melissa. It'll be Melissa. Yes. <laughs> this episode, guys, was She's brought already to you typing by... it as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> this episode was brought to you by Chris Keaton, Joe Centenary, Buck Naked Soap Company, 30 Roses, and Social Surge. All the links to these companies are in the show notes, so please check them out because they truly do keep this show alive. We would have been had to stop a long time ago if it weren't for these people. So uh Join them. Join the Patreon family and help us keep doing this show or else we'll have to stop and that'll make everyone very sad. <sighs> and if, if, like me, you don't want to see Marcio cry, uh, you can sponsor the show at patreon.com slash bridge the Atlantic. Um, we, yeah, we appreciate everyone who's supported the show so far. And if you want to join that awesome club, you know what to do. And I mean, look how awesome this interview was with Melissa. Like, seriously, <gasps> it was amazing, <laughs> Melissa. You know, Yay! just and I, I mean, such a blast. <laughs> that's it. We want to keep doing these. So, you know, anyway, yeah. Melissa, thank you so so much for going on. It is uh it really is a true honor. We um I think I was introduced to you, it was definitely over a decade ago. I can definitely say that. I was still a teen. My late oh. teens, I was just a little pup. Oh or maybe my God. yeah, about eighteen, nineteen. So Where? Where? Yes. Uh no, 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 just through Zen of Screaming. Oh, oh uh, just oh, how I discovered okay, okay. that. So um I, Okay, well I'm in love with you now, so you oh. never get you can't, you, can't <laughs> get away, you can't lose me now there we go so thanks for coming okay. on and uh, please you. do come back again soon okay I will I'm awesome. gonna be watching you uh oh uh oh now I'm nervous I'm gonna be watching you <laughs> <laughs>